G'day, we're Gin and Rick. We're going to take in a bus tour. Our bus is a 1984 Toyota Coaster. It used to be a college school bus way back in the day, but now it's ours. We got this bus in 2021 and spent the majority of 2022 getting it to what you see today. We filmed all these videos on YouTube, but as you can see, the outside paint is wrapped to paint. It's really heavy duty and it wears hard. That means, as you can see, a couple of scrapes done really hurt it. And you can always just give it another cut. Some other points for the outside of the bus. That's our grey water and that's where we empty it. Here we've installed two tanks of fresh water and there's the inlet, that's where we fill it up. We have a tank for the fresh water here and here, either side of the wheel. Here we have shore power, just in case we run low on electricity inside the bus and we have to pull into a caravan park or somewhere to charge up, that's there, ready to go. Sick light bar, one of me good mates, one of me best mates gave us this. XTM light bar so that we don't have any trouble driving at night. Up the top we've got our max air fan which just allows us full airflow through the bus. We also have five solar panels which gives us massive amount of intake. 975 watts in so we can collect that electricity. Fill it. And if you're wondering what that rhino horn is on the top, that's our cell fight. It's our antenna. And these are our windscreen wipers. Now I'm going to palm you over to Jen, and she's going to show you everything that's inside the bus. Welcome. Come on in. You might have to move the dog. Come on, Zach. On your bed. Sit. Come in. Come Whoa. Welcome into our Gertie Home on Wheels. We've been living in this bus now for over two years full time, and so we know her pretty well. So we're going to give you a tour of what we've been living with. But let's start in here. This is our kitchen. We have nice wide benches, if you haven't noticed. So our kitchen benches are 600 mil wide, like a normal house bench, so heaps of room on them. In our kitchen space, we have our fridge, some drawers, and our pantry with our induction stove top on top. In the top half of the bus, our his and hers walking robes. Uh, at the very front of this side, we have our power setup, so all of our fuse boxes in the front there, as well as all our switches, and we have our fridge. It's 125 litre, basically it's a fridge freezer in one and the um, the condenser is not inside the fridge, it's actually external so that means you've got the entire space within the fridge and freezer. So we can fill this bad boy up with fresh food, it's enough to get us through, like we have went three or four weeks without having to stop. Next we have our drawers, which they haven't been prepared for today, but they're not actually that bad because we planned for spaces for everything. So this is our, obviously, utensils drawer. We have always got some gold coins for laundry mats or anything that might pop up. And yeah, I mean, that's boring, but that's, it is what it is. This is our toiletry drawer. So this has been something that's been really good for us because it doesn't mean we have to get out a toiletry bag or anything. It's just like being in your own home at home. Everything's there and easy to get to. Next drawer down, we cook everything from scratch, basically. We don't eat processed meals. So we have a full herbs and spice collection in here, which is probably a bit of luxury in a van, in van life. Oh, and also, fun fact for you, I waited for Coles to have a, a reduced to clear on one or two of the herbs and that way I was able to get these square jars with herbs in them and they were herbs that we use like turmeric and chilies. So I've got big bags of those spices but it just meant that I was able to get these square jars that fit really nicely in the drawer because the round ones you often have a lot of wasty space. Then we have our pots and pans which we have um, special induction stove ones. We have the three with the little handle and they fit really well in there with a little bit of felt between them. 
bits and measuring bits and pieces. You can see everything fits really nicely. And then we have in here our bowls, plates are under there, mugs. So yeah, everything's in there and nothing makes any noise when we're moving. And then we've got these latches by RV Lab fella in Victoria. Uh, we've got these cupboards that we built through Ikea and the drawer system from Ikea as well. But basically everything that in a normal house you'd have in a Tupperware container or in a jar, glass jar or something, we got these um, Ziploc bags that we can just store things in to keep them fresh. And what we have found is that as something gets low, we'll be buying something new. So even though it doesn't look like much space, we have everything we could possibly need in a normal household kitchen in this small space. Nuts, seeds, legumes, sugar, flour, tea, oil, and espresso, what are they called? Aeropress. And then this big drawer underneath is where we have our other pantry items, so our pans, goods. And then down the bottom, there's just a good bit of space for our cooking containers and whatnot. And like everyone that's done a van life video, I'll show you if you put some stubby holders on glass or anything that might crink, clink, that'll stop them from banging around. And then we always have a couple of spare bottles of water just in case we have any water issues. On this side of the kitchen, we have our wet space, which is our kitchen sink. Under our kitchen sink, it's not glamorous, but there's a rubbish bin, all the dog food and cat food, toilet rolls, spare toiletry bag, some baby wipes, and a box of cleaning products, and you know, just that knick-knack drawer, but it's all very organized. Oh, and a couple of half <laughs> drinking bottles of wine. And then this little cabinet at the front used to be part of the framed-in shower area, but it's now our laundry space. So we put all our dirty washing in there. And if you've lived in a tiny space for any amount of time, you get to know very quickly that everything needs a home. So we have a spot for our dirty washing. We have a spot for our toilet rolls and our rubbish bins. So there's nothing of it out. Obviously when we're cooking and whatnot, that's different. Um, but it, everyone's always surprised when they come into our bus because everything's got a spot. I had to have a hair break. We started again. Look better again. I bought this for him because I've shrunk one in the washing machine and it doesn't fit his head, so I'm stressed. Yeah, and I think I've already showed you in the pan in the cupboards. Nope. Oh, I'm sure I have. But anyway, you told us about it. That's that's my side filled up with all my goodies and oh, and same thing here. You can see the latches underneath. They're from RV Labs and they just clip from the bottom there and they're not coming open so we've got all our fuses is that what they're called yeah fuse station whatever and yeah all the, all the power stuff okay and then this little bad boy here mum actually gave us it's a clothesline we move it wherever we need it so if we have some wet jocks and socks or bathers or whatever we can hang it in the window and the sun gets them but otherwise it just sort of hangs out there when we're not using it all right down the back here we have a full-size double bed which fits us both perfectly it's 180 something centimeters long so brendan fits in from head to toe just i'm sure he's looking forward to being at home in our big bed we've had a couple of different mattress setups in our time in the bus originally we had an inner spring mattress that was exactly the same as our home bed it was super comfortable but it was really hard to make the bed and meant that our feet were touching the inward curvature of the windows. After we had the inner spring mattress and we fumbled getting that out, we switched over to a an inflatable four-wheel drive mattress with a memory foam topper. That was really comfortable, but at some point it started to feel like it wasn't thick enough. So since then, and for the last 18 months, we've had a Dunlop mattress, which we got through Amart with a memory foam top on top and that's actually been really really comfortable we have changed our setup underneath originally we had plywood like most people have with the circle cutouts to you know make air breathable whatever um, but we changed ours now and if you can see under there it's um slats so it feels it's really quite supportive and if we ever need to do any work on the power or plumbing or whatever we can fold our mattress up and pull the slats up and it's really easy to get in there to do work. 
We built this shelf just to storage of big bulky stuff, but it's kind of become my little bookshelf. Um, and then Brennan stores his little fishing rod underneath there. The Sirocco fan that generally is running night and day. Um, if anyone's had a Sirocco before, you know they're brilliant. These vents up the top lead to outside vents. And you can also see behind me here, we've got a ring camera. So whenever we go out for the day, we switch the inverter on and leave the cameras running so we can see what's going on in the bus as well as if anyone approaches the bus. So that means if we need to duck into a supermarket, we can see everything that's going on throughout that time. The last thing up the back here is we have this storage cupboards, bench top. We've had all different things in these over the years, but currently we have one side with vacuum packed clothes with the less summer clothes, and the other side has all my winter tops because we've been doing a lot of op shopping. <laughs> so I've got more clothes than I've ever owned in my life in this bus. It is true, you don't need that many clothes living on the road. We used to share one of the cupboard spaces between the two of us, but yeah, that just goes to show how good the op shopping's been in WA. Yeah, so our electrician recommended these lights as he puts them in a lot of caravans and we've been happy with them. There's three lights that have different settings. So there's the blue light and then our bright white light. And we have three of those in the bus. The blue light's meant to be better at deterring like insects and stuff from coming and hanging out. Being attracted. Lights. Being attracted, that's the word. But how can you resist this body? My body. So the blinds that we've got the whole way around are made of blackout curtain fabric and I've layered the in I've layered the inside layer is a closed cell reflectix type fabric so it insulates from inside and outside. Okay, so over this side is our like loungy, comfy living space. Both of us can lounge on this really comfortably with the dog and have dinner or watch a movie, whatever. But what's great about it is underneath it all, without too much effort, um, we can get in and, for example, this side here is our first aid side. So you can see that's got heaps of first aid and stuff in there. And then underneath the rest of it is like batteries for the cameras and the toaster sticks in there and in the corner there, there's games and stuff we don't use very often, but it's there if we decide we need it. And that really doesn't take too much effort. Obviously there's our Max Air fan and oh. don't look up there, it's probably filthy. We have a lot of cushions, but it just means that we can make for really comfy picnics and whatnot. This is the cockpit. Like Brendan told you, it's a 1984 bus, so it's very basic in everything that's in here. It serves its purpose. It gets us from A to B, but we put in this headliner shelf, if that's what they're called, and mostly it's just got stuff that um, we need to get to really quickly, like beanies, scarves, gloves, mm. sunglasses. Yeah, this is my seat. Brendan's seat over there. You know there's a sausage in, in Paz pastry here. What? You bought that yesterday, didn't you? You're joking. Yeah, so not much really else I can say here, except that this was a couple of really old destroyed chairs and we found a guy in Adelaide that reupholstered them. And I don't know if we've got any footage of it, but can you see just there? These have been reupholstered. So they're the original chairs. We've just got the lamb's wool on them to protect them. Yeah, so originally this was a 22 seater bus and when we picked it up, the day we picked it up, we ripped out the insides of it. So it's come a long way from its humble beginnings. We spent, we had a budget of 50,000 from start to finish. So I'm going to take you outside and show you what the most expensive object in this bus was. Now, let's go. Oh, and if you didn't notice, this isn't obviously the original bifold door. We had to re-engineer this door to pass compliance. So the most expensive part of our build in that 50 grand budget is in here. Not that you can see it. I'll just pull this one out there. Alright, so in here, which for some reason is super big, um, is our power setup. So our inverter, um, batteries, 
fuse boxes, isolator, it's all in there. So that was a $20,000 setup, which we can break down and give you lots more information there. Um, so in the boot here, we obviously have all of our tools and liquids and spare parts that we might need. We also carry in here a box with all the sorts of mechanical spare parts and plumbing spare parts. And then the rest of the boot is filled with a tub full of shoes, um, camping gear, climbing gear, adventure gear, fishing gear. What else? Up shop clothes. Glennon has <laughs> shops at the moment. It's good value for money. Trying to help the environment too, mate, you know? Oh, can't just wear the headband. Got to be the headband. Yes. <laughs> we always have a couple of spare bricks for our composting loo. Um, and in there's our air conditioner. This is our shower. I can't think of what it's called, but it's one of those surf showers. We've also got an ever ever ready, ever more camping shower that we have back at home in storage, which was great when we weren't just traveling along the coast. So that's the most expensive part of the entire build. One other thing that we did do when we were building the bus is we tinted the windows. And that's definitely been a game changer for us because it just means we don't feel like everyone's looking straight at us during the day. It gives us the ability to see them before they see us. Yeah. Unreal. Well, thanks for that. Yeah, well... I hope you enjoyed it. Getting so close to me. <laughs> um, yeah, so thanks for coming along. I think we might have finished. <laughs> <laughs> mm, thanks for hanging out. And we look forward to making you another video next week. Until next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>